Hello and welcome to the second part of my breakdown of posters for Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power TV series. If you've missed the first part, the link to it is in the description down below. In this video I'll be analyzing the second half of the posters and breaking down the most relevant theories about them. Without any further ado, let's get to it. This poster, that is an intriguing one because there are two very different theories about this one. The hands of this person are quite small, which signifies that this is either a child or a hobbit. And and the ring on his on his neck, uh, while it's probably an, just an ordinary ring, uh, it could be a reference to Frodo. And actually we know that in this show there is actually going to be a black hobbit played by Sir Lenny Henry. Judging by his interviews, in which he wasn't very secretive, he's going to play a Harfoot. Uh, Harfoots were one of the three breeds of hobbits, uh, browner of skin than others, uh, who lived in the lower foothills of the Misty Mountains. And yeah, that could actually be him. Now, people are also speculating uh, that the scroll he's holding and th those inscriptions here are actually in the language of the Haradrim, language that's made up for the show. Tolkien didn't invent it. The Haradrim, we've seen them in The Lord of the Rings, uh, fighting uh, for Sauron. And so yeah, he, if he's not a hobbit, if he's not Harfoot, then this could actually be a Haradrim child, or an Easterling child. We've also seen Easterlings fight for Sauron uh, in the Third Age. Now. <laughs> the, now, the discussion about this poster is, is pretty crazy. Uh, some people speculate that this is one of the Blue Wizards, who were one of the five Istari, who were sent to Middle-earth uh, by the Valar around 1000 uh, Third Age to help people of Middle-earth fight Sauron. If you don't know, uh, Gandalf, uh, Saruman and Radagast are Istari as well. Uh, but the blue wizards, they were, they were, uh, they were no-shows pretty much uh, in every book. Uh, it is said that they wandered far east and they were never seen again. And they either organized uh, resistance against Sauron in the east, or failed their missions, as Tolkien notes in his letters. So yeah, this could be one of the blue wizards. But the problem with that is that Istari came to Middle Earth after Sauron was defeated, after the One Ring was taken from him. So, yeah, that's that's a bit too late, at least for the first season of the show. Uh, but <laughs> there is another theory about this poster, and is that this is actually Tom Bombadil. Uh, I mean, that would be great. Who doesn't want to see Tom Bombadil in live action? Come on. <laughs> Now, the next poster could actually be connected to the previous one. If we look at the size of those berries in her hands, well, it would seem that she's actually a child or a hobbit. But those are berries. And, well, there is one character in Middle-earth who is actually named after berries, and that is Goldberry, the wife of Tom Bombadil. <laughs> And this is a bit of a crazy theory, well, as is Tom Bombadil appearing in this show, but um, yeah, it, it, it would be great. It would be great to, to see both of them in the show, since they were completely uh, omitted in the Lord of the Rings movies. Now, this, is, this, is a, this one is a bit hard. I mean, some people speculate that this is the second Blue Wizard, but most people talk about this, this claw. Uh, which could actually belong to a, a Varg. But it could also signify that this person is a skin changer. The most notable skin changer was Beorn, uh, whom Bilbo and the dwarves met in The Hobbit, and who could actually change himself into a gigantic bear. And so, yeah, this person could be a skin changer, mm, but also there has been rumors that um, there is a character in the show uh, codenamed Hamson, 
who is described as being the elderly man who doted on his family, but had health issues and feared he wouldn't live through to the next winter. And some people are connecting this rumor to this poster and, well, yeah, that, that could actually be him. Those, those hands seem like they belong to someone fairly elderly. Now, this poster is, is very much lacking in clues. Uh, like, the only clue here is that she's holding her belly, which could potentially signify that she's pregnant, but we have absolutely no idea who could that be. Now, this, this is most likely a hobbit. Uh, Again, the size of those acorns, uh, it signifies that this is either a child or a hobbit. My money is on a hobbit. Mm. But it's also interesting how green those acorns are, uh, which could mean that they're, there's something special about them. Okay, and now this poster. Well, the, the first thought that comes to most people's mind is that, well, this is Sauron. This is Sauron, obviously, let's move on. And, well, that could be true. That could be true. Uh, besides the obvious black, menacing, edgy armor, uh, we can also see golden specks on his, on his gloves, which could uh, be a, an allusion to the creation of the One Ring. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be Sauron. It might as well be the Witch King of Angmar uh, or some other Nazgul. But there is also a rumor, a rumor that I don't really like, that this is Joseph Mole playing a character called Adar, an presumably original character for the show. And now, according to rumors, uh, the character of Adar, codenamed Oren, is a corrupted elf who could possibly become a Nazgul and who serves Sauron, leading a band of orcs. Uh, I I don't like this. This is this is the this is the first rumor that I genuinely dislike. I'm not a fan of 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 a corrupted elf serving Sauron, that's... yeah. And it, it is even said that uh, this Adar will be actually a some sort of father figure to the orcs. And well, I know that one of the main theories about the origin of orcs in, in Arda is that, that they are basically elves who were tortured and corrupted by Melkor. It's one of the theories, it's, the Tolkien never 100% specified was the origin of orcs, uh, but this Adar is said to be an elf, not, not an orc, a corrupted elf, and uh, this is what I, I don't really like about this, this, this whole thing. But yeah, it could just be a, a rumor. Now this, this is, my, this is actually my favorite. Uh, no, one, no one actually knows uh, who this character could be, but it doesn't matter. What matters is the sword. Now, there is only one significant uh, black sword in the history of Arda, and that is Gurthang. Now, Gurthang is most notably known as a sword of Turin, and, well, I'm not going to get into Turin's story. It's a thing for another, another video, but his, his history and the history of the sword itself is very, very tragic. It's probably one of the most tragic stories uh, in the history of, of Middle-earth. And basically, in the end, uh, after Turin killed uh, the dragon Glaurung with, with the sword, for reasons that I'm not going to spoil here, he kills himself by impaling himself on on the sword, and Gurthang actually broke under his body. And yeah, what do we have in this poster? A black broken sword. That's uh, yeah, that's that seems that seems pretty obvious and pretty amazing. Now there's a rumor that in the show, Gurthang 
is actually sentient and it's trying to find a new master uh, and it is possibly corrupting uh, just as the One Ring. Uh, and well, I, I, I don't really like this particular rumor because well, in, in the Silmarillion, Gurthang does speak to Turin uh, before before his death, but it's never really specified if it's the blade really speaking or if this is just Turin hallucinating. And so I don't really like this, this rumor that uh, this show will actually take the blade speaking uh, literally. Mm. And also this this corruption thing, I Gurthang never corrupted anyone. It's it's not a it's not an evil evil item like the One Ring. Uh, it doesn't corrupt people. Turin did commit one or two awful things with this blade, but those were his own deeds. The blade didn't make him do it. And so, yeah, I'm not really a fan of this whole corruption thing. But yeah, still it's it's going to be very, very cool to see Gurthang in this show. Uh, even though, technically, the blade was buried with Turin after his death and was never seen again, but I guess I can let this particular inaccuracy slide. Now, this one, this one is pretty obvious. I mean, <laughs> there is all. I mean, there is an obvious horse uh, carved as a handle of the sword, which, well, it has to be a reference to the Rohirrim. Uh, and so, this person is most likely an ancestor uh, of the people of Rohan, and so this could actually be a Northman of Rovanion. Uh, Rovanion being a region south of Mirkud. Yeah, uh, nothing more to say here. Except that this this armor is is very very cool. Now this one, yeah, this one is this one is one of the the hardest ones where we we basically have no clues, except for this star here, which again could be uh, the Feanorian star. And if it is, then this this is, this is an elf, but we have no idea who that is. Oh, and now and now this one. Uh, again, we would be clueless if not for uh, if not for fellowship fans and some some rumors that that I don't like. Uh, basically, it is said that this is Emma Horvat playing Karin, Isildur's sister. Sister. Most of uh, genealogy in uh, in the Silmarillion and then in the Lord of the Rings and stuff is very specific. There, there isn't much room for inserting some original characters. And yet it seems that Amazon's... Well, if this rumor is true, then it seems that Amazon is actually trying to mess with the genealogy big time. Because Isildur and Anarion, they, they don't have a sister. Elendil doesn't have a daughter. And so, yeah, and, and also I, I wouldn't be as opposed to to this uh, to this inaccuracy, uh, if not for her name. I mean, seriously, Karin, wh what is this? Wh what is this name? Where in the whole Arda could a, could this name belong to? This is like this name for me and many other fans. This name just simply doesn't belong in. Tolkien's world. Because obviously Tolkien has a very thought out and very specific uh, etymology for for names. And this name is... it just doesn't fit at all. This is the main... Mm, 
I guess, hint that this rumor is actually fake because, well, Amazon hired a lot of great Tolkien linguists who are working very hard on, uh, on the languages in this show and it seems very, very weird that they would actually have a character named with such a unfitting name. And also her, her rumored storyline is... It sounds basically like a rehash of Faramir storyline from Lord of the Rings. It's, 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 it's bad. It's, it's, it's so... It's so... It sounds so bad that I actually think that it's, it's fake. Some people are also speculating that they are actually going to replace Anarion with her, which, which would have been even more awful. Yeah, I hope, I hope this, this is not true. Now, the second to last poster, this one well, is, is definitely a noble man. Uh, and it's, it's, it's hard to tell who could that be. And there are two most common theories about it. Some people are, are focusing on the rings, some people are focusing on the ornaments. And so, some people think that this is Arpharazon and others that this is actually Gilgalad, both of which we've already mentioned before. And Fellowship fans actually says that this is Arpharazon, uh, played by Tristan Gravel, who will actually portray Farazon uh, before he actually became a king. So that would be before he married his cousin uh, Tar Miriel, which actually makes sense. That would be a very nice setup for him as a future villain of the show. So yeah, my my money would actually be on on Arpharazon here. And now the final poster. This, this seems like a a very noble knight, and well, most people actually speculate that this is someone from the house of Elendil. Uh, either Elendil himself, or Isildur, or Anarion. Anarion being uh, a younger brother of Isildur and uh, the High King of Gondor and Arnor and the ancestor of Aragorn from the Lord of the Rings. And Fellowship fans says that this is Elendil wearing the Numenorean seafaring armor played by Lloyd Owen. And yeah, it is. it does look like a seafaring armor with those uh, swirly ornaments, I guess. But it also has the, has the sun, which is, which is interesting. Alright, uh, those were all the posters uh, that were released. I hope you enjoyed this, this analysis. If you have your own theories, uh, write them in the comments down below. Uh, next week, on Monday, the actual official trailer for uh, the series is going to be released during Super Bowl, so I will definitely be making a reaction and later a in-depth analysis. And also in the future I am planning to make videos on uh, on Celebrimbor, on the Rings of Power and maybe Turin. So yeah, uh, stay tuned for the future videos. Namariya.